representative of Pasteur. Topic of common interest, infectious diseases, omics, neuroscience and bioinformatics are the highlight of the program that will be discussed during the symposium Fiocruz Institute Pasteur. Today, you will meet researchers who are dedicated to promoting integration of knowledge in the research areas. At this meeting, we aim to stimulate the evolution or the beginning of collaborations on a joint and integrated manner. Simultaneously, the event is open to the public in order to disseminate scientific knowledge generated. We now invite for the opening words Daniel Scott, representative of Pasteur. Well, I am here because I need somebody uh, to represent the uh, desk to Pasteur. And our director is arriving tomorrow. Uh, I'd like to welcome all our colleagues uh, from Brazil and from France for, to this meeting. This meeting is designed to uh, make a point about the co cooperation and collaboration between uh, Fiocruz and Institut Pasteur, uh, also for the future of the cooperation between Pasteur and uh, Fiocruz. Uh, I'd like to welcome you. I hope this meeting has very nice conclusion and very nice uh, future programs. Uh, I'd like the few plus to all the organization of this meeting. Thank you. I would like to invite Rodrigo Stabelli. Vice President of Research and Reference Laboratories. Uh, good morning, everybody. And on behalf of Dr. Paul Gadelha, I'd like to welcome you on this symposium at Phil Cruz. Uh, in truth, uh, we could consider this meeting very commemorative for three uh, principal reasons, at least. The first one, this meeting is part of commemorative of 150 years of Phil Cruz and its first institute, the Oswaldo Cruz uh, Institute, nowadays led by, by Savino, who had proposed these two days of science discussion. The second one, it's the signature of two tripartite agreement between Phil Cruz, USP and Pasteur that will be in this afternoon at 4 uh, 30 p.m by the presence of these three uh, institutions. Phil Cruz and, and Pasteur have joined Proficus collaboration. I have no doubt that scientists of these two institutions are doing well, but, but uh, we can do more together. The tripartite agreement has how men objective to join enforcement to build uh, a future Institute Pasteur uh, of Brazil. And here, from the third reason, to point in this commemorative morning. It's possible to meet together to do more and more collaboration between us to constructing a solid base to make science for the welfare of the world population. This symposium is very important to do more collaboration through the principal web of research in health that is coming up for the Latin America. I hope you can enjoy this two day of meeting. I hope you enjoy the Rio de Janeiro. Thank you. Welcome. It's really an honor for me uh, to be here as, uh, as director of the Islamicus Institute in this particular year in which we celebrate 150 and 15 years of existence of this institute, which afterwards uh, uh, clustered a number of other research institutes so that to become the Zola Cruz Foundation. This is really something. And um, to put this in a context of a symposium between Passer Institute and Oswaldo Cruz Foundation, it's 
also something very important because of the origin of the Osvaldo Cruz Institute itself, uh, when uh, Osvaldo Cruz came, coming from uh, Pasteur really set up something that was necessary for the health of the Brazilian people and is still doing such a kind of work, producing knowledge, producing uh, products for medicine, for vaccination, etc., and producing formation of human resources, young people, and I think it's very, very nice to see from here, what you are not seeing is to see many young people uh, attending this meeting. So it means that we're still going on with the very first principles of the Pasteur Institute and of the Oswald Cruz Foundation. So it's really um, an honor, I think, for us, all of us to be here, actually. Uh, celebrating scientifically, but also in terms of um, a political uh, structure that is about to be signed, that will allow as a kind of uh, a platform to ensure that uh, in the following years we're going to very well plan the uh, settling of an Institute Pasteur in Brazil with a true uh, link since the beginning, actually, uh, of. Uh, as well as the Foundation and the University of São Paulo, both huge and important institutions for our country. Um, so this meeting is the scientific part of this whole uh, two-day uh, work here uh, in the campus of Manguinhos. And it has already been said, uh, the, the large themes that are going to be discussed here correspond to the themes that will be worked on for the following months in terms of structuring uh, common projects to be developed among the three institutions, namely uh, infectious diseases, neuroscience, and the so-called omics, particularly we, have, we will have uh, a bioinformatic um, um, roundtable today. So, uh, so this is, uh, I think, the most important things we're going to do here in the following 48 hours or 36 hours. And um, I'd like to uh, ask a favor, actually, to the speakers, is to really strict to their times, which is about 15 minutes, so that we can have five minutes of discussion. Uh, since nobody denied of speaking in 15 minutes, I think everybody accepted. So uh, I really uh, ask you because of the time, actually. But this will allow us and some of the presentations are actually conjoint presentations uh, involving ongoing projects already. Uh, so I, I really think that this is not a problem. The objective is to put on stage what we're, going, what we're doing, either in collaboration or intending to collaborate, and then uh, the discussion, the individual discussions, either presentially or uh, electronically, will be actually the, the tools to progress in the collaboration itself. So thank you very much. Welcome. Good work for all of us. Thank you. We would like to thank the authorities in this opening ceremony. Thank you so much. We are about to begin sex, section one, bioinformatics. I would like to invite as your person, Rodrigo Stabelli. No, oh, I, I think that we, we are on time. Uh, we have uh, four speakers for this uh, opening uh, session. And we are in bioinformatics. I call us a from uh, Science Biological Institute from, from USP. Winda Grave from uh, IOC. And Magnus Fons from uh, Pasteur Institute of Paris. And uh, Teresa Vasconcelos from National uh, laboratory uh, of scientific computation from the uh, Minister for Science and Technology. I'd like to, to, to invite Dr. Paul Zanotto for this first speaker. I warn you at the uh, last five minutes. Yes, yeah. yeah. No, I'm very embarrassed because I could think of 50 other people that should be here now at this moment. But uh, on the other hand, uh, I, I'd just like to make a very brief introduction. I was with some of the men in the last 
society was in uh, periodic, uh, uh, and uh, I was I was talking with him. I said, so why, why don't we have a few clues in São Paulo? Why don't you guys move on? And uh, because it's, a, it's, it's a gap, it's a tremendous gap. And today, I, I, today I find myself here. Yeah, sorry, sorry, today I find myself here in a very odd situation. There's a marriage going on, and at the same time I have a lot of children already because I see. A lot of people here which have uh, been collaborating in Pasteur and also in, uh, in Fiocruz and uh, so it's, it's, it's a dream come true and I really hope this thing goes, goes up. Congratulations to everybody who actually moved that. Well, what I'm going to be talking today, it's a, it's a bit of a, a, a everything, in, the, the, the theme is how we can use bioinformatics, how we can use the virus to actually look at epidemics at the same time, how can we, at, in real time, interfere with outbreaks and have some kind of uh, uh, outcome out of it? So I'm, I'll, I'll be talking a little bit about the uh, uh, final dynamic of outbreaks. This is what is going to be the main topic. And, uh, and it's a mini Rio de Janeiro, very similar in terms of several aspects. And uh, I was going to talk a little bit about dengue, I think. Be actually, I don't think I, I think I should uh, be spending a lot of time with it. But basically, it's a symptomatic disease. Eventually, traffics enters into the human population and starts circling. This is an outline of the stomach of the virus, single polyprotein. We're going to be looking at this gene here. We're going to be following. Uh, this is basically. If we look at flavivirus in general, they are associated mainly with, you see, there is a large group here associated with virus, including virus that are already here in South America for a long time, like Fossil, Fusculare, Yells, and so on. And the other virus that are uh, associated with Aedes, cheap type, or dengue, and yellow fever, seeds, all is associated with it. We don't have in Brazil so far. I don't think we have found it here. And then flavivirus that are that no vector associated. So a very interesting group of viruses completely their evolution, the phylogeny is associated uh, with their vectors. So we're going to be talking about phylogenetics. Next year is going to be the 20 year, the 20th birthday of the first paper on phylogenetics, technically speaking. And this is the guy who developed phylogenetics, strongly. He's sitting here uh, trying to, he's going to sleep uh, in the night, this is a, yesterday's news in Edinburgh. He's going to sleep outside to try to raise awareness about uh, people that have uh, drug dependency. So basically what, what we do is transform phylogenetic data, genealogical data, into dynamics. And in that paper, we actually show that the uh, diversity of dengue maps with the uh, increase in human population. So it's a landmark paper. This is the really year this is the HIV burden, massive, huge, I don't know go over that, you know that there should be around 100 to 150 million people every year infected by dengue. And this is very interesting. I showed this thing here a few months ago, last year, to the, uh, to the consul, U.S. consul, he visited my lab and he wanted to talk about, uh, you know, the, the World Cup, what's going to happen with dengue. And I showed this thing. Very interesting, because this is the actual state of Sao Paulo data, and you see that it's an oscillation with increasing amplitude. So when you fit a very simple, trivial, high school grade function here, you see that it's grown, growing more than fast. And, and this is the data of this year that we, I just added here after we had this curve. So looks like we are going big time. Half a million people infected, we have 200 more to go. Okay. So basically we're probably seeing a scenario in Brazil that we saw in Southeast Asia where literally tens of millions of people are infected every year. Okay. So welcome to the new reality. Um, so this is the data, this is the, the outbreak. I don't want to spend much time on that, but basically we, we follow, you're going to see this data on, on, on the map and everything. But this is the patients we were able to look at. And the very interesting thing is that we have 285 patients that we could geolocate. And uh, so we could basically, it's very bad, this slide, but we could 
Actually, you map everything. Here's what you've done. Here's the beach. Here's the entry from some fog. Here's some of the harbor here, the largest harbor, I guess, in the state of Sao Paulo. And here's what it's here. You have the Shanti Thousand version. Here's where the Marley, the, the land has a house in it. The wealthy part here in Seattle, Long Beach, all flanked by Shanty Towns, a little bit like Rio. It's compressed, it's in Rio because you have the flats here, you have the ocean, and it goes up and you have the Shanty Towns. So it's a very similar situation, it's a mini. So this again is our data. What we get from the patients is actually sequence data from the virus, and we can stratify this in time. And so different localities are shown in different colors, and you can see how the virus jumps around. So what we can do with that? Basically, we can get this uh, fiber genealogy data and start looking at very uh, interesting parameters of basic SIR models, in which we have an idea of the number of individuals infected, force of infection, and the uh, reproductive rate going up as the outbreak uh, goes to a close. So this is primary data and all the transformations. We can use it also the skylines driving from the genealogy and we see what goes on in the epidemics. It's very, the color is not very nice, but the only thing I would like to show you is that here is when the state starts to talk about more than 300 cases per 100,000, so it's an epidemic situation. And red is when they apply, <coughs> they apply the fumacid, they apply the pesticide. And I just want to show Something very interesting. Uh, this is the situation. This is, I have to interrupt a little bit. This is what we do. We got these patients, and we measure the NS1 of these patients as well. So if they have NS1, IgM, or IgG, we can see if it has NS1, it, <coughs> it means that we can sequence it, and we're going to find virus out of it. So the information on NS1 was actually, actually passed along to the people that they're actually controlling mosquitoes. They saw this is. A posteriori, but at the time we didn't have those maps because we, have, we, have, we didn't have the signals, but we have NS1 data. So these people in Guarujá, they concentrated fire in terms of Fumacé in two localities out of 30 something other places they could. Because they had a lot of information, they had a lot of viremic people here, so they concluded a lot of infection would be derived from those places. So basically they concentrated fire here, and this is what happens. So it's a very interesting situation. Just after that, there's a massive drop from 113 cases notified every day to less than 10. So it's very interesting. You can use two bullets and kill a dragon instead of shooting you around. So anyways, I, that, I, I, should, I should stop here because it shows that real-time intelligence when you're dealing with an epidemic could be a great situation. But I think I go a little bit further. Very interesting to see the associations of those would be bigger, uh, those bigger things, your big hubs, or and this would be migration rates derived from the amount of change of local biases. And we see it more or less correlates very well with the, with the, road, the main road system in the island. This would be the, the, the interference and the trees. Now, we can look at other interesting things as well, so very brief, and for a little bit more minutes, some more minutes. So this would be a network uh, of transmission of dengue. Okay. And the size of the ball here would be the number of secondary cases around the case. It's very interesting information. We can spread it out from the island as a whole. And we have a degree for that number of secondary cases, which is more or less the distribution of the, it's a surrogate for distribution of the productive rate of the, of the, of the virus, number of cases. And we see some nets which are disconnected some bits of it, that now after we actually got data from São José do Rio Preto and other places in Brazil, we see that these things are movement of virus taking place very fast between west, the west of the state of São Paulo and the beach. You have to remember that this thing here is a, it's a, it's a, it's a beach resort. And people come from all over the state here to get infected by dengue, to take dengue back with them and to, to bring new the strains of dengue. Uh, another, another thing we can do with this, with this secondary data, plus the NS1 and IgM, IgM and IgG data, is to look at, for instance, this thing here, which is based, when you look at this, let me follow you guys here, let me show you guys. Those would be cases with a lot of secondary cases associated. And those are not reactive for IgM, 
non-reactive host variety gene and highly reactive for penicillin. So apparently, for some reason, it tends to show to us that uh, individuals that are actually non-responding immunologically are associated with lots of transmission. And individuals with high NS1 are also highly virulent. Okay, so it's very interesting this result in itself, and I think uh, we should uh, uh, go from there. So if we look at those, the first thing we thought of, probably these cases with a lot of secondary cases could be a viral lineage, but they are not, because if we map those cases with a viral genealogy, they are clearly not, let's say, in a same cluster in the branch. There's something else going on, and I think it's a very interesting thing to look at. So in conclusion, phylodynamics of the divorce, because of the e gene, it's a good mark, it's stable, the, the rates of change are very much indicative of the process the virus is undergoing in the field. It has a stable nucleotide composition. We are doing a work with people in Pasteur, there in, in Africa, we see the West Nile has a tremendous bias, and depending on the lineage, it changes a lot, and, and we know that the lineage of West Nile that are now replacing the others around the planet are a completely different virus in terms of purine load. So it's very interesting because also people in Pasteur, in Dakar, did uh, work on, the, on cell lines and showed that there's difference in rates of replication of the virus in cell lines, which, which ties up very nicely. And so this, this, this kind of complication, we don't see that. And also there's no significant recombination. We, we don't, although we published recently papers on, on, on mosaic in dengue, that's not a very common thing. And it's, this helps a lot, this kind of real-time follow-up of, uh, follow of the virus in, in, in an outbreak situation. So those would be my recommendations. I think we need to incorporate virus genealogy and patient data to better understand the evolution of an outbreak. I think what was an interesting proof of concept of that. And also real-time data can be extremely important because in Guarujá, they actually, once they had this data on it, so they knew that there was clusters of highly pyramid people, they went to Sao Paulo, they brought the trucks into Guarujá and spread uh, the insecticide there, and they brought down the outbreak, which was very nice because if you look at two years prior to that, they had huge tents in the field. They were actually uh, dealing with a, almost like a military emergency situation because of them, and this didn't happen this time. And, uh, and I would like to end with this statement that I'm going to borrow from Mark Miller, my friend from NIH, who controls the entire network of influenza, where there is no overlap, there is a gap. We are making a huge overlap. Thank you very much. Thank you. You may hear a question at the stage of this round. Please, Doctor, you have uh, 15 minutes. Okay, good morning. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to present some of uh, the work of the computational uh, uh, science in the uh, field. Um, so actually, this is a, is a presentation, a um, composite uh, presentation from slides from many different uh, people uh, in the field. Actually, the presidency um, decided to reorganize this year for all the internal networks in the and uh, uh, move to a much more translational uh, research emphasis, um, trying to uh, integrate uh, different uh, aspects of, uh, of uh, Fucru's research, education, technological development, uh, reference services and also uh, technological platforms into an effort uh, to bring more immediate uh, and integrated solutions uh, for public health in Brazil. Um, so as you know, um, both the research and technological platforms are spread all over the different uh, units in Fugrus. As well, uh, several of the slides are from those different units uh, in different places in the country. So as I said, uh, uh, it's a real challenge to integrate biomedical research and technological development, public health research 
and the clinical research um, and integrate that into the innovation system at FUCRUS uh, to bring more of our solutions uh, actual, actually to production or use in public health. Uh, support from our technological platforms and core facilities in Fucrus. Um, so we have 14 different uh, um, technologies. Uh, if you if you want uh, with uh, oh, something like 60 different units in uh, in the research uh, institutions in Fucrus. Um, there's a lot of effort also to integrate that with the, the efforts of human news for uh, diagnostics uh, development, for example, it's just as an example with the lateral flow systems and miniaturization of uh, diagnostics. Um, uh, so for the translational uh, uh, research, uh, we have now five uh, uh, networks for infectious diseases, three networks for chronic non-communicable diseases and three for uh, technological research um, which is essentially nano uh, technology uh, synthetic biology and also a fairly large group of uh, omics technologies and scientific computation in different aspects uh, in field crews and many of those groups um, already collaborate with the different uh, research groups at the Pasteur Institute uh, so uh, just in a very brief uh, description, we have uh, three major sequencing plat platforms in uh, Fiocruz, in Rio de Janeiro, Belo Horizonte, and Curitiba, for minor centers in uh, regional uh, research centers. In, uh, then the bioinformatics group is uh, mostly genomics, focusing on genomics, proteomics, structural bio biology, and then obviously. Uh, mathematical modeling, epidemiology, statistics, and system biology. Uh, in terms of hardware, uh, we have now something like 2,000 cores uh, uh, dedicated to scientific computation, uh, something around 500 terabytes of storage, and uh, um, the cruise is also uh, organizing a new uh, data center which uh, will provide partial, partially for the scientific community uh, processing uh, possibilities in a cloud structure. Uh, we have uh, essentially two major um, postgraduate uh, um, courses which uh, have uh, bio biology, uh, cellular and molecular biology and scientific computation as one of the focal points. Um, so what is this from the Oswaldo Cruz Institute uh, which is a, a top level uh, postgraduate program uh, according to CAPS uh, classification. Um, so it's a very extensive uh, uh, program led by Leda and um, And as I said, uh, uh, scientific computation is one of the focal points. The other one, slightly, slightly out of uh, formatting, uh, the other uh, is a, a graduate program in systems and computational biology. Uh, which is a younger program, has a, a integration with different uh, uh, other institutes in Brazil, mostly in Belo Horizonte, but also in LNCC. Um, and we have the uh, 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 yeah, uh, participation with the also non few uh, uh, institutions like uh, Cook and the uh, Federal University here in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, Major uh, research fields here are structural biology, functional genomics, evolution and phylogenomics, and then information system and mathematical uh, modeling, which is a very extensive group. Uh, they are working on different aspects of uh, mathematical modeling in public health. Um, so there are several uh, uh, initiatives already with the integration uh, and probably We'll have some time to discuss uh, on that later. Uh, there's also a, a joint course uh, planned for the end of the year, and uh, Martin certainly will talk a little, a little bit more about that. Um, on uh, one uh, research uh, project in a group from Fabio Passetti, uh, works made uh, uh, as a major interest in uh, proteogenomics in cancer and neglected diseases, cancer tra transcriptomics, and uh, uh, 
contribution to the or the use of the thousand genomes uh, uh, cancer genomics research. Uh, in terms of technology, as I said, we have a fairly large uh, um, um, variety of technologies uh, available in Fucurus, and we are trying to optimize uh, the use of those uh, uh, from through the different units of Fucurus. Uh, this is uh, some of the infrastructure in the Horizonte. The other uh, major structure is actually here uh, in this building. Uh, these are different uh, research projects on, uh, on mostly on genomics and uh, uh, synthetic biology uh, in Belvoirisnoitje from different research groups, uh, both uh, on, on pathogens, but uh, they also work on several other uh, organisms uh, in cooperation with the Brazilian industry. Uh, data mining, uh, immunoinformatics and system biology, mainly by uh, uh, Jeronimo Ruiz and his group, uh, who also has a cooperation with the uh, Pasteur Institute, working on different aspects on, uh, of uh, uh, immunoinformatics and uh, uh, prediction of uh, epitopes uh, for B and T cells and the optimization of uh, vaccine design, for example, is one of the uh, so they have uh, obviously different uh, courses and uh, training uh, um, opportunities, um, mostly uh, related to the uh, BCS, uh, computational and system biology postgraduate. Uh, then the whole cell computational modeling, an integrative approach from Fabrizio Silva from the Process A uh, scientific computation group uh, here on this campus, uh, also in cooperation with the uh, Institute. Um, uh, different uh, projects on uh, molecular modeling, structural biology, and uh, <coughs> the understanding and design of, uh, of uh, in this case, for example, integrins, which is uh, a project in cooperation with Sabinus Group. Um, uh, so there are, but there are about six different uh, groups in, in Fucurus uh, working in uh, different aspects of. Uh, uh, molecular modeling and structural biology, also some of those in part uh, in cooperation with the MSSC Institute. Uh, so for the, the whole cell uh, uh, representation and uh, modeling, uh, uh, as you know, Plasma Genitalium is already uh, an ongoing project in different uh, places. And From uh, Anna Carolina Guimarães and the LNCC uh, cooperation, also uh, modeling of uh, molecular uh, biochemical pathways in different pathogens, and uh, uh, trying to design um, um, possible new drug targets. Uh, in this case, in Trypanosoma cruzi, identifying analog analogous enzymes um, as a preferential drug target or unique enzymes for a pathogen. Uh, so, for any um, uh, microorganism, if you know the complete genome or predicted uh, protein sequences, uh, uh, the system generates in a very short time uh, 260 uh, biochemical maps or something like that, uh, with the marks of all the specific uh, enzymes, and it's a very useful tool, uh, which is actually also available online for the researchers. Then a project on comparative modeling. Uh, also with the NCC and the same group. Um, I won't go into detail, but uh, obviously it's very important uh, to understand more of the uh, biochemical network uh, in microorganisms uh, as an essential aspect of many different uh, uh, projects in uh, computational biology. Uh, different approaches uh, for, for comparative uh, modeling of, uh, of uh, new uh, newly sequenced uh, enzymes, uh, for example, um, or analysis uh, prediction of uh, protein function in, uh, in organisms uh, because there's still a very high uh, percentage of uh, uh, protein functions that are unknown to us. This comparison between all the known uh, genomes in the in scientific uh, uh, public databases together with uh, something like 120 million uh, sequences 
uh, protein sequences predicted from uh, from biodiversity from different origins. So that's on a very short uh, overview of some of the computational uh, biology and uh, scientific computation in fuel So we'd be very happy to interact uh, 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 with our colleagues and try to uh, make that cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for this opportunity to, to be here in, in this wonderful setting and I think that uh, this is a marking of the new way uh, to do biomedical science. We need to work in a collaborative way and I think this tripartite uh, partnership between us, Dear Cruz and Pasteur, the Pasteur network will be extremely important because you know of course, that Institut Pasteur is not only uh, an institute in Paris, there are actually 32 plus one uh, to come now, 33 institutes uh, 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 around the world. And we need to work together, because I, I, I think that, that uh, as you said, it, we are talking English here today. But, but, but the true language of science, I'm a professor of mathematics, so I have to tell you that I... I think it's mathematics, uh, and this is this is now something that is that is reshaping all of, of biomedical science. We it is becoming more and more, and and you will see the the, the evolution of, of biomedical science over the next years. It will become it is already becoming uh, computational and modeling science, and I think this will also shape the way we train people. And I will come back to that. We need to train people in a new way, and we need to do this in a collaborative way. We need to create a new ecosystem, worldwide ecosystem, for how we conduct science. And we, I mean, science has always been about sharing. It's a, it's a global community, and often when you tell young people that come in, that they say the biggest benefit of this is that we build not only global health, but also peace. Uh, worldwide, we are a community. It has always been this way, but as the amount of data is uh, growing exponentially, so is the need for interaction and, and sharing. Uh, there are a lot of baseline studies uh, going on. I mean, people in biomedical science. I'm, a, I'm an outsider, so I, I can a little bit look at the biomedical community, and uh, I would say that, of course. You have been quite protective of the data that you produce, at least until you have, uh, let's say, picked all the low-hanging fruits from the data. You, you are sure that then now we can release it. I think this will change. We need to pick also the low-hanging fruits together. Science has to be reproducible. And the, the science we've done so far in, in modeling has often not been reproducible. We need to change that. And I think that we have the opportunity together to change this on a global scale. We are a quite small community if we look at, at our community together, taken together. We know each other, we can trust each other, and we can work together. It's very hard to do this on a totally open, worldwide, global scale. But I think that we can achieve it. And we can be uh, 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 an inspiration for the rest of the community uh, around us. Uh, we have also focused on uh, sick people. Uh, and these baseline studies show that we have started to be also interested in how does the normal population look like. So I picked here uh, Genomics England. That is a fantastic thing. I mean, uh, sequencing 100,000 people or the Precision Medicine Initiative in the US. And I also highlighted the Resilience Project, which also is a very targeted project. It, it focuses on, on healthy people that should have been severely sick. So uh, this is powered by Sage Bio Networks, and if you don't know it, you, I, I think it's an interesting thing to look at. These are focusing on genomics. Uh, in, in several other studies, we are building data uh, in a much broader sense. Connected data, not only on genetics, but also on proteomics, metabolomics, epigenomics, uh, the omics data that we are collecting. 
And an example here is the Milieu Interieur uh, project that is uh, headed from Institut Pasteur in, in Paris. It's uh, Luis Quintana Moussi and Matthew Albert that are the two PIs. Uh, but it's a huge consortium where we collected uh, the data from 1,000 healthy French, three generation French, uh, stratified for uh, age between 20 and 70 years old, uh, half women, half men. And uh, we have an enormous amount of data that we are now starting to publish on and that we will share with, the, with, the, with, with you and with the community. I will come back to this. We are in the Pasteur network and in collaboration with, with you, hopefully, we are uh, heading for doing this on a global scale. So this is the Healthy Human Global Project, where we will do the same type of study as in Milieu Interieur, but across all continents, in maybe five countries, but we are open to, of course, having much more, and where we, in a collaborative way, will mine uh, and model the data that we collect to better understand the uh, healthy human uh, immune response. So we have clinical data protocols, uh, sero serology, we have whole blood stimulation in the true culture tubes coming from Myriad, which are wonderful that we do stimulation by different types of bugs, TLRs, uh, 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 agonists, nasal, na nasal swabs, stool, uh, all of this is then integrated. We look at the microbiome uh, and uh, then, of course, we come to the analysis. This was a back-to-back -back publication last year in uh, Nature Biotech and uh, Nature Immunology. And it shows a little bit the, the, the point of view of, of the community so far in modeling uh, in, immunology, in immunology data. There is not a lot of modeling here. It's basically statistical learning, if you look at it. It's a lot about data mining. And I think we have come to the point where we can actually do true modeling, going back to first principles of the data. And this is what I hope that we will be able to do together. I think the future is this holistic and integrative analysis where we really also go back, I mean this was illustrated by Wim, uh, that you are already working exactly with this. You are doing modeling. You are trying to go back to biochemical first principles together with the high throughput data that you generate. And I think this is exactly the way to go forward and we need to do it together. And of course we need to train the new emerging generation of, of researchers. I will just give a very, very quick uh, example. Uh, uh, so there is very little science in my talk, it's more like a political talk. But uh, this is a, a, a publication from 2009 where they uh, took dendritic cells from mice and stimulated them with a couple of different uh, bugs, TLR agonists. And they looked at the response and they built a regulatory network model. And that model is, this is a fantastic paper and a fantastic uh, data set that they have shared. But they still uh, only used kind of a binary output, uh, either you activate or you don't, or you inhibit, and then they tried to build a regulatory network from this, and they also did short hairpin RNA to test the stability of the network they built. And basically they only used one time point. They had have, they have nine time points from half an hour, 30 minutes, up to 20, 24 hours but they saw a good di discrimination between the bugs at the six hour time point, so this was the time point they used to train uh, the regulatory network. I think we can do better, and I will show you only one slide. So this is a, a principal component analysis plot uh, of, the, of the data, uh, and they share the data through gene expression omnibus, and uh, the uh, accession number is GCE1. 7721, if you want to download and look at this for yourself. I think it's the best time dynamics data on, on uh, immune cells uh, so far. But we are building exactly this uh, with the milieu interior, interior data. So we are stimulating with uh, around 40 different uh, uh, TLR uh, agonists going from uh, cytokines, uh, I1 beta, interferon alpha, beta, gamma, uh, uh, and TNF, 
And then we are also having a lot of different bugs, including these one, the poly IC, the Gardica, the Gardica mud, the, the lipopolysaccharide, LPS. And we are also doing uh, timelines. So we want to understand it. Also, a, a, another interesting thing is this is only dendritic cells. And of course, uh, uh, an immune response is actually a concert uh, where a lot of players act together to produce the immune response, not only dendritic cells. So here we are stimulating the whole blood uh, 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 samples that we have, and we are getting a lot of interesting results. And this is what, also what I hope that we will do together, because as you see here, I hope you see, uh, so you have the healthy control, it, it, it slightly goes off, so it starts, uh, now I have to point with this one, let's see if I can do it, it starts here, this is the zero hour time point, then slightly in the third principal component you have a movement from zero uh, hours up to 24 hours, even for the, for the control, there is some movement. But you see also for the, for, for the poly IC, it grows off here and goes and it really curves around in 3D space. And 3D space captures 80% here of the variance. So this is true structure in the data. And I was uh, almost freaked out when I started to see these patterns, these curves that grow and that we can study. And we are now doing this also for, not only for, you, uh, for mice, but of course also in, in the, this uh, uh, milieu interior data. And I will be super happy to work with uh, all of you on, on this. I think it's not something that you can work on in isolation, one lab or 10 labs. We have to do this in, 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 in a global attack of, of this type of data. So we want to set up this uh, infrastructure. We, we are setting it up already together. We are in contact uh, to, to build uh, a worldwide cloud where we can actually work together, have mirror sites where you can access the data, have storage, uh, high performance computing, and also work together with the uh, human resources. So we are trying to build this. We had uh, a scientific uh, day and a steering committee meeting for the bioinformatics network where you form part uh, of USP field uh, crews and we had several speakers from Brazil and we broadcast it worldwide uh, and we had many uh, viewers also from Brazil so we looked at the Google uh, documentation and there were many people from Brazil looking. Uh, training will be key and this is what where I will finish. I mean there are very good existing online uh, repositories for training. I, I very much recommend them. Uh, but we will need, need to do more. We did an um, uh, uh, international data analysis hands-on training course in Montevideo in December. Several attendants from Brazil came there that we still are working together with and have contact with. And we asked, uh, we, 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 the, I think the unique thing here is that the researcher came with their own data. We selected people uh, based on the data that they brought as much as on the CV that they had. So we really worked together on their own data. This is, and many of the students, so-called students, were, were uh, PIs, professors, who came with their data and we, they, and we started to work together. I think this is a very good way to create uh, concretely the, the, this network. So two upcoming things are what uh, was indicated here in uh, both by Paulo and, and, and Wim. Uh, so in Sao, Sao Paulo we are having a joint course, so this is USP, Theo Cruz and, and Institute Pasteur Network that are doing this in October, and then we have the course, uh, hands-on course, also in Rio de Janeiro in, in December, and I will be very, very happy to uh, come back then. I think it's a fantastic uh, beginning of a wonderful uh, uh, GPRT partnership. Thank you very much. for scientific computation is one of the Institute for the Ministry of Science and Technology and Innovation and our lab is in a city near here at the city of Petrop, 70 kilometers far from here and we have there a, a bioinformatics lab and a genomics lab that I will try in 15 years 
to figure out some experience that we had in England during sequencing uh, some genomes and transcriptomics analysis. So currently we are working with uh, a lot of metagenomics uh, projects, some of them uh, in environment uh, uh, representative from Brazil such as the main row or the some areas that uh, with the impact of oil, with petroleum, we work with a lot with uh, Petrobras and now with Petrograph, Petrograph from Portugal. We all have been sequence uh, the gut, I don't know if you can see here, but the gut from the Ashatina, Ashatina Furica, there is a snail, a Ishkarbo, that uh, is present in a different uh, environment in Brazil. And we all perform different metagenomics uh, projects with the biotechnological interest. And we are working with the Fundação uh, Mellier in order to identify the biodiversity from the flu in different countries in the world. So, related to the bacterial genomes project, we are seeking many bacteria, most of them are from Unity, uh, care intensive Unity. And then, the, but we also sequence different type of the bacteria. Some of them related to the animals, or related to the environment, or for the agricultural purpose. We also uh, work with the fungi genomes. Uh, most of them, or I think all of them, are related to human disease. And uh, we sequence uh, and working with a lot of parasites. Some of them, the parasoma. But we have sequence uh, already uh, also the mosquito uh, from the malaria, transmission from the malaria vector from the malaria disease. And uh, actually we have sequenced more than 2,000 uh, individuals that uh, because the uh, anophilus diagnosis not, not, cannot be put in the lab. So we have sequenced 2,000 individuals and it is the first time that uh, we sequence a population and it was a hard work uh, to assemble and to identify the, the, the genes. Uh, of course, because we found a lot of SNPs in this population, but we, we have groups that work with us in, that have performed uh, the functional analysis of these genomes. We also have some projects that is finished now, with some of them the, for sequences of birds, Brazilian birds, we are uh, sequence to the papagayo, and here we are interested in, uh, in the longevity and the change that they are involved in the, 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 the learning speech. But we will we'll sequence to other birds uh, from Brazil, Sabia, and uh, the Jaflor, and other ones. We also work with some cancer projects. We have sequencing to cells for the same patients related to the breast cancer. And uh, we also work with the colon cancer, and uh, we have performed a lot of study in exome and transistome related to this cancer. And from the transistome side, we have sequenced many different species, and some trees, some snails, some bacteria, and other ones. And to do that, what we have is the facility for sequencing at the NNCC. And uh, we have uh, the most important, the most common sequencers. But uh, as I told you, LNCC is an uh, institute for scientific computation. And at LNCC, we have the responsibility to be the high performance uh, sequencer and to take care of uh, most of the, the, the big machine for processing uh, the data. And now we buy, we buy a boom machine with 1.2 pentaflops, and I think this, this will help us a lot to perform the bioinformatics analysis. So to do that, we have developed a software that the name is Sabia. They start as a bacteria uh, 15 years ago, but we can deal with the assembly and the annotation and the comparative analysis and metagenomics for this, uh, this different uh, organisms. So we work in this, this manner. We have in the same place the facility for sequencing and the people that want only to sequence sequencing because we can put the information available for normal or for those that want to collaborate with our group, we start 
the process for the bioinformatics analysis of these genomes. For do that, we have a middleware that, middleware that will distribute over the task that we have to perform here to our server in, in, at NMCC or other partners, the, or other SENAPADS, that's the Center for National, National Center for High Performance Computing, that they are distributed all over the country. And we are using, as I told you, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a very friendly tool that we can start assembling the genomes and it's they start the annotation. We have different pipelines, depends on the type of uh, data that we are analyzing. We can perform the same kind of comparative analysis of the genome that we are annotating here, and we can also move more with the method of genomics analysis. Uh, related to the genetic disease 
three children. So, uh, and for the laminina database, laminina is the molecules uh, that can be found in the pesticide and the matrix. And the, the goal here was to put all the information that is spread in the different database in the same place. So we have uh, some information about uh, the protein, the genes, the expression, etc. We try to go to the, all the database where we can find this information. Then we pass through the manual operator. We have person that uh, are looking for each one of these laminins. And then we organize that in a database and we put available for all the information in only the one website available to the whole the scientific community to assess this data that's free. We start at the beginning of this year a project with the Institute Pasteur, uh, LNCC and USP in the Tripanosoma Vivex in order to, for the prediction and the production for IoT target that ties the serial diagnosis. I don't have any time to talk about that. I, I, will, I will talk only for the first step that is our the, the identification uh, to the epitopes present in stresses uh, protein from different strains from T, T vivax and the other experimental uh, part of this work has been performed this this ongoing project in the Institute Pasteur Apari. So for the bioinformatic point of book you, uh, Raphael Guedes, there's a postdoc at the lab here, he developed his home uh, pipeline and we start with the transcriptome from the t -Vivax. That is a transcriptome that uh, came from the UCA. Uh, and then the, we start to, to identification with what to, the number of proteins that are expressed in this transcriptome. And the other side, we looked for the genomes from the TVIVA genomes that are available in the web, and we try to identify the, 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 the proteins that are exclusive to the TVIVA and then identify, identify the, pro the surface protein that are exclusive to the TVIVA. And then we combine these results, and at the end we uh, we arrive to seven proteins that are surface proteins. They are common to T vivax strain, and for these seven proteins, we continue with uh, uh, experimental uh, uh, experimental analysis. We start with to try to amplify this protein and then test it for a damn test for IG recognition. That is uh, will be done in the Paulus Minopoly uh, labs at the Institute of Pasteur. We arrive to produce three stones at, at the moment, but we will be ongoing the future work. We'll be to compare the TV that has been sequenced in the lab for Andy Luca from the Zimbabwe strain that will be prepared from the Maka Teixeira lab. Then uh, I hope we can analyze this data together with the results from these labs in the future. In the near future. Uh, sorry for that, I don't understand what has happened. And, uh, and uh, we have we, we collaborate with a lot of labs in Brazil. We have uh, uh, the, Brazilian, uh, the Brazilian National Network that I'm coordinating. She started in 2000. Of this day, we sequence most of the genome that I have told you. We have sequenced under this network, and they have been published. They are published. So most of them, and we continue to work with all these universities. And we also have some collaboration with different countries, international collaboration, mainly with the Fundação Instituto Mimir, but we also have a laboratoire international associé, national uh, <coughs> in bioinformatics, with the University of Lyon. Uh, and then we, we also work with uh, the very close relationship with the Institute in Institute of New York and São Paulo. And now we start the collaboration that I'm very proud of that uh, with the Institute of Pasteur. And uh, as a uh, postgraduate,
way, of course, we have a positive relation between computational modeling and the LNCC. There are grades 6 and 7 that uh, is a multidisciplinary area in CAPS. And we have a specific area from uh, bioinformatics and computational biology. And we started in 2005, and up to now we have uh, 57 dissertation and thesis in this program. We also organize many different workshops uh, at LNCC. At uh, the beginning of this year, we have a course for three months, and we, we have more than 150 students in all the fields from uh, bioinformatics and computational biology system biology. We start from the side, the computational side, molecular biology, bioinformatics, and so on. I think uh, my time is finished. No? But thank you very much for your attention. Okay, you are just on time. Thank you, thank you to everybody, thank you guys for the presentation.